Oh, that's right, another hot one today. Uh-huh, Microsoft reported earnings just a little bit ago, so we're going to be taking a look at that. The stock has kind of taken a little bit of a boop, a uh, big old rocket ship uh, right now, 4.5% up after hours, was actually a little bit, little bit higher, around 6% at one point, um, so really good stuff here. As far as that is concerned, we'll take a look at these earnings. Uh, obviously, if you're in for my earnings to watch, I told you this. I expect to beat on both sides of this, both the, uh, the EPS and revenue. I thought revenue was going to be a pretty big beat. Uh, I thought they were lowballing it a little bit. So we'll take a, a little bit of a look at that. If you look over the last year of the stock, it's worth looking at, obviously, because it helps determine why the stock's going up. Up 43% over the last year. Um, so the stock's had some success, there's no doubt. So uh, it's worth noting when you're looking at this. <clears throat> it does have an impact on where the price might be. So we'll take a look at these earnings now and see what we got. Um, so uh, gap EPS of $2.03 beats by $0.39. Cents. Whoo! That's a bigger beat than I thought. That's even a bigger beat than I thought. That's massive. Uh, that's a really good profitability line for this company and what they've been able to do. I really like that. I like it. Uh, and the revenue line is even better for me. This is an incredible line right here. Revenue of $43.08 billion is an increase of 16.7% year over year, which is a beat by $2.85 billion. There are very few companies that can be posting a revenue of this caliber um, that still see an increase of over 15%, even over 10%. A double-digit increase at these levels is incredible when you're talking about $40 billion. It's a lot of money. A beat by $2.85 billion is even better than I expected. Even better than I expected. Um, I thought it would be closer to 10% growth. I said, I, I remember in the video, I, I said 10% growth year over year. Um, that's big. 16.7% year over year growth is really big. That's a really big, really big beat there, uh, and I'm proud of them. I'm proud of them for doing that. Uh, so here, obviously, from Amy Hood, uh, CFO, uh, accelerated demand of our differentiated offerings drove commercial cloud revenue to $16.7 billion, up 34% year over year. We're going to look at cloud revenue. Obviously, it's pretty important. We continue to benefit from our investment in strategic high-growth areas, uh, no doubt. You definitely look like you benefited. Shoot. A little bit more of a uh, breakdown here. <clears throat> so obviously shares search quite a bit. The productivity and processes uh, business or business processes sales increased 13% on the year, 13.35 uh, billion above the 12.9 consensus. Office 365 uh, commercial revenue is up 20% of the period, while LinkedIn sales increased 23%. Pretty nice to see in that aspect. I think LinkedIn sees a benefit because a lot of people are looking for jobs. So I could see LinkedIn doing doing quite a bit here. Uh, it's important to have connections, and LinkedIn helps you do that. Intelligent Cloud totaled a 23% year-over-year growth, 14.6 uh, billion versus the consensus of 14 or 13.75. Good, really good beat there, over nearly a billion dollars. While Azure, uh, Azure grew 50% uh, up from 48% of last quarter. People were kind of uh, uh, scared that this was decelerating in terms of growth. And if you look at the dollar amount, it really isn't. Um, one thing I don't think, which is crazy, you think these billionaire investors would probably think about it, but the larger the number is, the harder it is to increase by the same percent. 67% growth at $50 billion is a lot different than a 67% growth at $10 million. The growth rate is, in terms of dollars is... It's so much different. So that's something people need to think about. Growth rate of 67%, which Azure was doing, is just not feasible when you talk about the long term. It just can't continue that rate, and eventually it has to slow down. Um, it's not slowing down in terms of dollar sales, really. There's really not, not any proof to show that. Um, but percentage-wise, if they're growing by the same dollar amount, that percent will grow down every single quarter. It just will. So you need to consider that when you're thinking about this company and, and what that does. So <clears throat> some people may paint a bleak picture if they see that number disappearing or shrinking a little bit. I just don't necessarily get it in my opinion. So, um, But more personal computing was up 14%. 
slightly missing the um, uh, well, never mind. It's not missing any estimate. Uh, 15.12 billion, which is above the estimate of 13.55. So there's no slightly missing there. Um, really good stuff. <clears throat> Definitely a typo by this guy. Who did it? Brandy Betts. Come on, get get it right. Good night. Uh, Xbox and related services showed the expected strength from the pandemic trends um, and new consoles. Uh, up 40%. Surface sales were up 30% during the time. Uh, search ad revenue <clears throat> was up 2%. That's really, really crazy stuff there um, to see. Obviously, consoles, people are going buck wild over the PS5 and S Xbox Series X. They're going buck wild. So, again, I, I called that from the start. The gaming segment was going to be outperforming. So, really good to see. Uh, we'll take a look at their press release. <clears throat> we like looking at the press release. Um, oh, oh, don't mind me, don't mind me, just a little bit of uh, uh, earning slides here. Um, we want to do the earning slides first, just to take a little little look at it. So you see overall um, growth in these segments, productivity and business up 13, intelligent cloud up 23, personal computing 14, uh, and as a whole 17, gross margin at 18%, uh, slight growth. Um, <clears throat> operating income uh, up 29% and net income of 15.5 billion which is incredible by the way incredible up 33% really good stuff um, yeah that's those are what I would consider uh, really good numbers um, if we look obviously cash return to shareholders they returned 10 billion to shareholders um, up 18% year over year 5.8 billion in share repurchases and 4.2 uh, in dividends Again, the, the company's purchasing shares, so they know the stock's got a while to go. I mean, come on now. It's going to keep going up. Effective tax rate of 16%. Pretty wild to see that as well. Pretty pretty wild. Um, from productivity and business processes segment, we saw uh, office, office commercial products and cloud services up 11%, driven by Office 365 commercial. Pretty cool to see that. Microsoft 365 commercial subscribers increased to 47.5 million as well. <clears throat> LinkedIn, obviously, you saw growth there. Um, Dynamics 365 revenue grew 39% as well. So, Intelligent Cloud, we saw Azure grew 50%. Pretty nice. For more personal computing, Windows OEM grew 1%. Windows commercial products and cloud services grew 10%. <clears throat> Xbox content and services increased 40%. Really crazy to see on that aspect. It's good. The gaming segment's been out of control this last year. Uh, Surface increased 3%, and then search advertising too. Pretty, pretty good to see. You get a, an, an idea of where you've seen growth here. <clears throat> and again, starting from the bottom here, LinkedIn revenue growth. Um, actually had the best quarter they've had in a while. Um, really good stuff there. Uh, Dynamics products actually increasing as well. Uh, Microsoft 365 subscribers continue to grow. Office 365, it's been sitting around 15% for a little bit now. <coughs> Commercial products, um, a little bit of a decrease uh, definitely year over year in terms of what they're doing there, but overall an increase, but percentage wise, not crazy growth. Um, so, uh, productivity highlights, again, we, we looked at that in terms of Office 365, Intelligent Cloud, you see that chart on the bottom and how just beautiful it looks. It just looks beautiful, it's growth, and the company continues to continue to see growth. Um, more personal computing, nothing crazy crazy, uh, again, we saw most of this already. Um, gaming revenue grew 51%, pretty wild to see on that aspect. And Xbox hardware grew 86%. Worth mentioning that, obviously, because that's the consoles. <coughs> really cool to see. <clears throat> then you get into the appendix. But again, what I'm into this um, uh, this here for is going to be the uh, balance sheet. We'll look at the balance sheet to wrap things up. Because so far, I've seen smashers. Smashers everywhere. <clears throat> Let me take a look at this balance sheet. It's a six month comparison, so not necessarily the full year that I like to see, but six months works. Total current assets, it's 173.9 billion compared to 181.9. Um, so you do see a decrease around uh, nine or uh, really eight billion dollars 
there in terms of total current assets. Um, and where you see some of that decrease is going to be in short-term investments. Um, so yeah, total assets in general, though, sitting at 304.1 versus 301.3. <coughs> a growth there of around $3 billion. So overall, total uh, assets has grown quite a bit. And you look at that number, $304 billion in freaking assets. That just seems crazy to me. Oh my gosh, that's wild. Total current liabilities right now sitting at 67.4 billion compared to 72.3 billion of six months ago. That's an incredible decrease already. Um, that's, I mean, that's crazy. And a lot of that you see in short-term unearned revenue. Uh, that number decreased quite a bit. Good to see that. And total assets in general sitting at 173.9. That compares to 183. Are you kidding me? 183. You're talking about a nine billion dollar decrease in liabilities this quarter, in which they grew assets by three billion as well. Holy crap! That's putting stockholder equity at 130 billion compared to 118 billion of just six months ago. That's a massive growth in terms of stockholder equity. The balance sheet grew. <coughs> that shows you what this company's doing right, and that's just those numbers are incredible. I mean, you rarely are going to see numbers like that at any company. Um, that's that's this is a state of the art balance sheet. I mean, that's companies need to look at this and and see that this is a balance sheet that is not to be messed with. Okay, you can't make fun of this balance sheet because it's beautiful. It's a an ideal balance sheet in my opinion. Now again, valuation on this stock you gotta you gotta consider it. One point seven trillion dollars in terms of the market cap here. We're talking about an annualized revenue. <coughs> um. <coughs> ooh. You hear that? Um, that's rough there. Um, that's 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 some valuation. I mean, that's that's a market cap right there. If you ever talk to me, um, we're talking about annualized revenue on this company, um, closer to uh, what the heck is it, was it at last? I think it was at two hundred twenty billion last I saw. Um, which again, that's a lot of money, uh, but. That's overall uh, right around an eight to nine times uh, valuation in terms of the market cap. Not incredibly expensive, and a PE ratio of 37.5. I don't think is that expensive at all for what this company's doing and how profitable they are. <clears throat> so again, if you're talking about buying the stock, uh, people might say it's crazy, but I still think this stock is a buy at these levels because of what they've been able to consistently do, and I know they'll consistently do it in the future. The demand for these Xbox consoles aren't going to die either, so that's a segment that you know is going to continue to grow. I think the cloud segment's going to continue to be massive for them. I just love the diversity of this company and what they're able to do. They're so diverse in their offerings, uh, and they're just doing a lot right here. I think the company's still still a buy because of this earning smasher just, just proved it to me. Um, and I think a lot of people realize that too, and that's why the stock's up 4%. So really happy that I've had this thing in my portfolio for the longest time, and it's been a massive winner for me. And I still think it's worth buying because this is a very good base to your portfolio uh, that you can hold for the next 5 to 10 years and be very, very happy with the results. So that's what I got for you today, and hope you have a great day.